Are humans the gayest species on Earth? Now, there's a question to pique your curiosity. As we delve into this intriguing topic, it's important to clarify a few terms. Throughout this video, we'll use gay and queer interchangeably, not just to keep things engaging, but to represent the broad spectrum of sexualities in the LGBTQ community. Remember, we're exploring this from a scientific perspective, not trying to label or limit anyone's identity. Well, let's dive into this fascinating subject and find out. So, how many humans identify as LGBTQ+, let's dive into the numbers, shall we? Globally, statistics vary quite a bit due to a myriad of factors. In the United States, for instance, studies indicate that roughly 4.5% of the population identifies as LGBTQ+. Now, that's about 1 in every 22 people. In contrast, a survey conducted in the United Kingdom found that nearly 2% of the population identifies within the LGBTQ spectrum. Meanwhile, in Australia, the figure is estimated to be around 3.2%. But here's the thing. These numbers aren't necessarily indicative of the true global numbers. Why, you ask? Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, societal stigma can play a significant role in whether individuals feel comfortable sharing their sexual orientation or gender identity. In many parts of the world, identifying as LGBTQ can lead to discrimination, violence, and even legal repercussions. This fear can lead many individuals to hide their identity, causing the numbers to be lower than they actually are. Secondly, levels of acceptance and understanding vary greatly worldwide. In some countries, the concept of different sexual orientations and gender identities is widely accepted and understood. In other places, it's a topic that's rarely discussed or acknowledged. This lack of awareness and understanding can also skew the numbers. Thirdly, there's the issue of self-identification. Not everyone who might be considered LGBTQ plus by others necessarily identifies that way themselves. This can be due to personal beliefs, cultural norms, or a lack of knowledge about the spectrum of identities that exist. So, while these statistics provide a snapshot, they're not a perfect reflection of the global LGBTQ plus population. They're simply the best estimates we have based on the information available to us. So, it seems like a significant portion of humans identify as LGBTQ+. But are we the gayest species? Let's turn our gaze towards the animal kingdom. Now, when we talk about the animal kingdom, it's a whole different ballgame. You see, animals don't exactly have a sexuality, as we humans understand it. But for the sake of our discussion, we're going to humanize their preferences a bit. Take for instance the bonobo apes, our closest relatives in the animal kingdom. These primates are known for their, shall we say, fluid approach to sexual behavior. Both males and females engage in same-sex interactions, using it as a form of social bonding and conflict resolution. It's part of their everyday life. Then we've got the bottlenose dolphins, another species known for their intelligence. Male dolphins often form pairs, or even larger groups, engaging in intimate activities with each other. This isn't just a one-off. It's a pattern that can last for years. Over in the bird kingdom, we find the black swans. One in four of all black swan pairings are of the same sex, typically males. These couples will often raise cygnets together, showing that parenting isn't just a heterosexual game. And let's not forget the humble fruit fly, a creature that might seem worlds away from us, yet shares a surprising amount of genetic material with humans. Male fruit flies have been observed courting other males, particularly when females are scarce. So you see, across species and continents, same-sex behavior is a natural part of life on Earth. It's not about labels or identities, it's about survival, social structure, and sometimes just plain old companionship. In a way, this makes our human fascination with categorizing and labeling sexuality seem rather, well, human. It's a stark reminder that nature doesn't deal in absolutes, and perhaps neither should we. So, it appears that being gay isn't exclusive to humans. But where does that leave us? Ever heard of the fraternal birth order effect? This fascinating theory has been circulating in scientific communities for quite some time now, and it might just have you scratching your head in curiosity. So what exactly is the fraternal birth order effect? In a nutshell, it's a theory that suggests a man's chances of identifying as gay increase with each older brother he has. Intriguing, isn't it? The idea is that with every male pregnancy, a woman's body may react to the Y chromosome, leading to an immune response that could potentially influence the sexual orientation of subsequent sons. Now this isn't a new concept, it's been studied extensively, with some researchers arguing that there's substantial evidence to back it up. 
They point to studies that show a higher prevalence of homosexuality among men with multiple older brothers. It's been suggested that this effect accounts for approximately one in seven gay men. Quite a significant figure, wouldn't you agree? However, it's important to remember that this is just a theory. While it has a lot of compelling evidence behind it, there are also pieces of contrary evidence that challenge its validity. For instance, not all men with multiple older brothers identify as gay and not all gay men have older brothers. There are also cultural and societal factors to consider, which can significantly influence one's sexual orientation. Moreover, the fraternal birth order effect doesn't account for all sexual orientations in the LGBTQ spectrum. It specifically focuses on male homosexuality leaving out other sexual orientations and gender identities. And so, while it's a fascinating theory, it's only a piece of the puzzle in our understanding of human sexuality. Another point to consider is the biological complexity involved. The theory hinges on an immune response to the Y chromosome. But the exact mechanism of this response and how it might influence sexual orientation remains unclear. It's a complex interplay of genetics, hormones, and environmental factors, and we're still sorting out how all these elements fit together. So where does this leave us? Well, it's safe to say that the fraternal birth order effect is an intriguing theory. It offers a potential explanation for a portion of male homosexuality, but it's not the definitive answer to why someone might identify as gay or anywhere else on the LGBTQ plus spectrum. Human sexuality is a complex tapestry woven from a multitude of threads and we're still unraveling its intricacies while the fraternal birth order effect is intriguing, it's just one of many theories out there. So keep your mind open, stay curious, and remember that the beauty of science is in its constant pursuit of understanding the world and ourselves a little better. So, are humans the gayest species? This question kickstarted our journey today, and as we've seen, it's quite the complex one to answer. We've navigated the numbers, dived into the animal kingdom, and even dipped our toes into the world of scientific theories like the fraternal birth order effect, every twist and turn has led us to gain a deeper understanding of this fascinating topic. We've learned that humans aren't alone when it comes to diverse sexual behaviors. The animal kingdom is teeming with examples, from our feathered friends in the avian world to the depths of the ocean where same-sex behavior is just another part of the ebb and flow of life. Yet even with these examples, it's crucial to remember that animals don't have a sexuality in the same way humans do. We use these terms to humanize their preferences, making them easier to comprehend at a glance. When we look at the statistics, they tell a story of their own. A significant portion of the human population identifies as LGBTQ+. But, as we've seen, measuring this is far from simple. Factors such as social acceptance, self-awareness, and the willingness to disclose one's sexuality all play a part. Thus, the complexity of human sexuality goes far beyond what we can see in the animal kingdom. Throughout this exploration, it's been our aim to approach this topic with respect and neutrality. We've laughed a little, learned a lot, and perhaps most importantly, opened up a dialogue about something that's not often discussed in such a way. This video was never intended to offend or overglorify the LGBTQ community. Rather, it's been about encouraging an objective, measurable, and highly discussable topic. Does this mean humans are the gayest species? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. And perhaps, that's the point. Sexuality, after all, is not a competition. It's a spectrum. A rich tapestry of experiences and identities that make life on this planet so incredibly diverse. So, while we may not have a definitive answer, it's clear that being gay in one form or another is a natural part of life on Earth. It's all around us, from the smallest insects to the largest mammals. And yes, even us humans. It's a part of the complexity that makes life in all its forms so beautifully intricate. And that, friends, is where our journey ends today. But remember, the conversation doesn't have to stop here. Keep learning, keep questioning, and keep exploring the wonderful world around you. While we may not have a definitive answer, it's clear that being gay in one form or another is a natural part of life on Earth.